Alright, so I think most of us are familiar with the missing no glitch. Uh, you go up here and you talk to this old fart over here. He'll show you a Pokemon battle. He uses Weedle. He's going to use a Pokeball. He's going to catch it his first try. Alright, so you do that. Fly to Cinnabar Island. Walk over here. Surf. This is it. Right, and you get a wild missing now. And you can catch it and do all kinds of stuff, right? Right. And I have none of these Pokemon. <laughs> so what exactly is the missing no glitch and why does it actually work? So I'm gonna show you guys that right now so I have a couple of tools just to help make everything a little bit easier to view um, so down here you have the hex editor essentially anything that happens in the game uh, this is where your RAM is so these items these numbers like change around and determine for example what kind of Pokemon you'll see what level your Pokemon are at what items you have what your character name is anything you can think of it's stored around in here or in one of these addresses and uh, Bizhawk kind of shows them a little weird, so pretend these ones at the beginning are actually a D. This is my RAM watch. Uh, it's just a shortcut, so I don't have to keep digging through this like long list each and every time. right? I can just go here if I want to change something. Alright, so what exactly is Missing No Glitch? So essentially, there are... Uh, there's 150 Pokemon, but... There are 255 slots you can have Pokemon since it's coded in Hex. So the first thing you have to know is encounter rates and, and how encounters happen. So what I'm going to show you, if we go down here, this right here that's highlighted, that's your chance of an encounter. So right now it's at zero, meaning I'm not going to get an encounter anywhere around here because I'm in the middle of a city. Uh, this is your poke, and actually all through here actually. Let's see where's the water? Yeah, a four somewhere around here. Yeah. So, so from here to here is your land Pokemon and encounter rate. So it goes the level the Pokemon is, um, and then which Pokemon can show up, and it goes back and forth. The further you get through here, uh, the more rare it is that it'll pop up. And then here you have your water encounter rates. And then I, down here it's like fishing, pole, fishing rods and stuff. Right? So you'll notice that if I go down here, once I, once I hit on this grass, this encounter rate is going to increase. And sure enough, it's at 19. And it goes either f all the way from 0, 0, meaning no encounters, to FF, meaning you're basically going to get attacked by Zubats. That's what that means, right? So if you see here, I have a chance of catching, of encountering a bunch of level three Pokemon, right? So level three, level three, level three, level two. And those, I, those are probably like Rotatas and Pidgeys. There you go. Now these right here, so these are encounters, these are the Pokemon. The thing about the, this is though, the Pokemon are programmed in via their hexadecimal ID. So for example, Rotata is hex number 24. So if I wanted to, to catch, say, a really high level Rotata, um, I can put, I'm not sure what it would be in here, but let's say, uh, I don't know. There you go, 55. That should be a pretty, that should be a pretty high level. For Rattata. Now the next one I encounter will for sure be a really high level. There you go. So these are level 85 because 55 in hexadecimal is 85. And you can also do that to get different Pokemon too, right? So if I wanted a Mew, I can change these around. Right, and 
I'm gonna change that to FF. That basically guarantees the next steps in the counter. So if I wanted a Mew, I can change that and it'll give me a Mew. Now where these encounter rights affect you are in are normally in grass, but you can also be in caves, right? And that also infect affect you. It doesn't affect you unless you're one of those two, right? So if I change the encounter rate to FF and just walk around Vermilion City or Viridian, I'm sorry. Uh, nothing's gonna happen. But fun fact, indoors you can also have an encounter. Normally, you want to be able to do that. And after each battle, it'll actually reset. So, real quick, if you just so you guys can kind of see how that how that works here, because it is important to know. So, for and these are so for example, Rhydon is I'm not sure where it is in the Pokédex, but hexadecimal, right? It's the first thing that you see is a right is Rhydon. Right, and Kangaskhan, and these are kind of and the theory is that the programmers just Put the hexadecimal number in as they as they kind of program them into the game themselves right so arcanize all the way down there mew now here's the thing it goes all the way from one to 190 decimal which is be victory builds the last pokemon that they programmed in there so remember that's 190 but there's only 151 Pokemon. So what does that mean? Well, that means that they had that they programmed Pokemon into there, but they had to cut them out for whatever reason. So in this case, those were missing no. That's where missing no come from because the number is basically missing. All right. So somewhere between Muck and Kingler, there was a Pokemon that was that was uh, um, planned, but they cut out for whatever reason. And you see a couple of them. So that's so that's why you get missing now. So now so now you're probably wondering, okay, well that explains why that explains that, but what does the old man have to do with that? Well, here's one other thing you need to know. So character names, right? Everything basically has a hexadecimal. So characters, right? If I name myself, right? So 80, right? Each character has its own hexadecimal as well. So now that we're caught up to speed on how hexadecimals work, let's see what happens when we talk to the old man. And you'll notice these will update. Right, so and once I click next, it's going to update. And they updated. So you're probably wondering, okay, well, that probably just updated for the Weedle. That's actually not correct, because for a Weedle... It's somewhere way down here. A Weedle is hexadecimal number 70. There is no 70 down here. So what is this exactly? So that is actually my character name. A-N-I-M-A-L. There we go. That's what it is. So that is the actual encounter rate. That's where it starts it at. So in order to show Old Man, it had to move your name somewhere. So they moved it to the encounter rate. Which makes sense because if you're to leave the area, the encounter rate updates. It's normally not a big deal. And you'll actually notice it too. So I'm going to fly to Cinnabar Island. And you'll notice that somewhere down here that it'll start updating. So let's fly down there. So no updates yet because we haven't actually gone, like, gone anywhere we can encounter Pokemon. So let's go here. So we go down here. And yes, so these Pokemon down here updated. And that's your water encounter rates. But the land encounter rates don't update. But that's not a big deal because you normally don't encounter land Pokemon. But as we know, that it does happen when we, when we surf along the coast. So why is that? Well, what happened was when the programmers made this, they kind of made a bit of... They kind of did a shortcut or a bit, they made a bit of a mistake. So everything you're seeing here is tile graphics that's just how pokemon runs so these land tiles um are actually i think they're like two across whatever so you got this tile and then you got water on one side so half of it is land half of it's water well when your pokemon have 
when you have an encounter with a Pokemon, it looks at the lower left hand corner. In this case, the lower left hand corner is a tile, and we can actually show that off here. So we have all the tiles over here, like anything you can think of. So as I'm actually so notice that it'll update as I'm playing, right? So if you look somewhere, yeah, around like right over here, you can see certain sprites pop up. So if I'm surfing up and down, it'll actually move. So the lower left hand corner, it counts as land, but there normally wouldn't be land Pokemon, so it never bothered to update the land encounter rate. So if we surf down here, we'll start getting, we'll start getting land encounters. Now, some of you might have done this glitch before, and they went and didn't get a Missing No. You might have got a glitch character named M. That's because Missing No and M both have decimal zero. They both have hex and decimal zero. So your name actually determines what's going to come up here. Alright, so you got Go Duck can, can pop up. Uh, you have, what is it, like Grimers can also pop up for my name. Or... You might get a wild M, which is basically miss has the same uh, graphic tiles as missing no. So that explains why missing no actually shows up. But what it doesn't explain is, okay, sure we know why it shows up now, but why does it look like that, and why does it mess up all of our data in the computer? So that's actually a good question. Um, the Pokemon data is actually stored as a uh, compressed graphics right so to show you what that looks like so this right here is all the data in pokemon or in the rom and these are you see all these like weird colors and stuff it's just visualization of code there we go it's code visualized but if we go down here you'll see actual actual sprites and there's your character sprite and we can keep going down we'll see some more code but we'll see more sprites, for example, credit payout, we'll see sprites for that. Yeah, the words also have sprites too. There we go. And we'll see different tile sets, like for houses, Pokemart, stuff like that. But what you won't see, you see that's the sand too. Now don't worry about the actual colors here. Uh, the colors aren't important, you can actually change them. What happens is the, the Game Boy reads it and it determines, it has their own palette for colors anyways. So th these can be anything. But Pokemon, you won't find any Pokemon um, sprite data because the Pokemon sprite data is actually compressed down in order to save memory. So what happens is when you encounter a Pokemon, it points to, it has a header for the graphics data. So, and it has different buffer zones. So, what'll happen is, if you see a Pokemon, let me go down here, it has three different sprite buff buffer zones. Sprite buffers A, B, and Z. So, let me, let's go ahead and encounter Pokemon real quick. You'll notice that these will change. Right before the Pokemon comes out. Right? So, there's sprite buffer 1, and then... Sprite buffer will also change. Sprite buffer 2. Change as well. And then sprite buffer 3 will also change as well. And basically what's that, what that's doing is it's taking the compressed graphics and just expanding it out through different buffers. So this is Poke so in Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow. It's a black and white game. So it has two bits of color. Now you're probably thinking, Anthony, you're an idiot. There's clearly color there. I can see it. That is not correct. That's actually the Game Boy itself. The Game Boy Colors and the Super Game Boy had, um, they basically have, for their popular games, it injects palettes into some of their, some stuff. So Pokemon was a popular game, obviously. So the software actually injects color into it. That's, the actual games themselves are black and white. So basically, so instead of the Pokemon data being one, uh, two bits of graphic, it separates them out into two one-bit planes and then puts it together. Now, so that's all the Pokemon graph tile data. And once we get down here, it's basically kind of empty data. There's really nothing going on. And there will be nothing going on for a while until we get down to here. So 
Now starting here, we get Hall of Fame data. Now normally when you encounter Pokemon, you don't, uh, this, nothing happens here. But with missing though, the pointer for it actually points to somewhere in the code where it handles tile map data. So because of that, the, um, the graphics aren't compressed at all. And because they're not compressed at all, it bleeds over from those sprite buffers and eventually messes with the Hall of Fame data. So to show you an example, let's uh, go to Victory Road, right? And I'll just get an encounter here. Notice, Hall of Fame data, perfectly fine. And if we look over here, we'll actually go up here. Let me move this out the way. Here we go. Here we go. We move down here and then get an encounter, we'll notice that these will change, right? It's just loading the Pokemon tiles, or the graphics, I should say. But if we were to see missing no, and let's view this, here it is. Here's, so here's my current Hall of Fame data, nowhere near it. Now normally, sprite data, nowhere near it. But if we catch missing no, notice that updates. So that's why your Hall of Fame data actually gets corrupted. So that's why it looks like that. Now the last thing, why does it update the sixth item in your bag? Well, that can be explained as well. So what happens is it tries to update your scene information. And actually, let me go ahead and hide this. Here's all the data for Pokemon that you've seen and Pokemon that you own. Um, each Pokemon has its own decimal number as well. So for example, Pikachu, text number 54. But it's Pokédex number 25, so it goes to, so basically what it'll go to is Hex, it'll say, okay, we see Hex 54, let's update Pokémon, or Pokédex entry 25. But if, but since this is kind of in, like, assembly, um, so for one, it would actually start with zero. So Bulbasaur would be zero, um, Mew would be 150, right, because you subtract on Pikachu, normally number 25. In the data itself, it would update slot 24. So that's what it updates. Now for missing though, it's number 0, right? So it has to wrap back around. So instead of 0, it updates 255. But 255 is way outside of these bounds for the, for the Pokemon scene. So it ends up updating the 6 item which is down here. There it is. So it ends up updating this. So if we go ahead and try to find them, there it is. And this is it. Notice that change, right? Versus if we see a regular Pokemon, it's not going to update that. So that's why it, up it corrupts um, number six, the sixth item. From here to here, you have your Pokemon owned and then from here to here you have Pokemon scene when you encounter uh, missing though it actually overflows it actually overflows a bit and then it updates your scene encounter for Pokemon's numbers 97 through 104 if we were to change these all to zero there you go so if we go ahead and just see a Pokemon right and it update and it updates there. So it updates Go Duck. If I were to catch this Go Duck as well, it'll update. There it is. It it'll essentially update for what was it? Wherever Cubone would be if you have nothing at all. I do want to go over a couple of misinformation that aren't exactly true. Um, missing no will not ruin your cart. Um, people think that it does. It actually can. It, I mean, it'll ruin the Hall of Fame data, essentially, and it can have some other implications on the game, but if you reset your game, you're fine. In fact, if we were to look at these, the memory domains, the RAM, these are actually why they have to have batteries in those old cartridges. Because that, that's where your save game goes to. If you just delete that out, your save game goes away and everything set, gets set back to normal. We know that through testing. People that might have had their whole cartridge messed up, they're probably doing like several other glitches on top of it or who knows what else. And that's probably what ruined it. And then there's also 
in the last couple of years, those batteries have died out. So unless you change, unless you change that battery out, you're going to lose your data. Um, and then also another thing too, there is no error with Cinnabar Island itself. Cinnabar Island is actually programmed just fine. The error was with the actual tiles. And to prove this, actually, so if I were to take my Pokemon, and we're gonna, f and to show you, this is actually not the only place that you can do this glitch. Fuchsia City, and this is just like a walkthrough walls. I'm not gonna change anything, the only thing I'm gonna change is the encounter rate. So I'm not gonna mess with any of these Pokemon, right? These are the encounters, and here's an one encounter rate. I'm just going to change the water encounter rate, which is 0, 1, 8, A, 4. Here it is. I'm just going to change this to 0 so I don't get an encounter. That's the only thing I'm going to change. Remember, that is 0, 5. So we're going to change that back to 0, 5. This is just because I'm kind of lazy. It's actually back at 0, 5. It's okay. I think as long as I'm on these, I should be okay. So we're at 0, 5. And... Actually I, even, actually, I don't even need a surf, to be honest. I can just do this. So, if I walk up and down here, we we'll, should get the same kind of encounters. And, what do you know? Missing, though, right? That shows up also. So, that is actually not the only place that you can do that in. Let's go ahead and fly out to Pallet Town. Something similar can happen in Pallet Town, although it's a little bit different. Now, Pallet Town doesn't have an encounter rate, and if I go down here, it'll actually change, but let's say hypothetically if it did. Right, so we're in the water, but we're still encountering Rotatas, and that's because Pallet Town around here is where, like, Rotata appear again, right? So it changes, everything's updated, but as long as I surf along these tiles... I will get land Pokemon. So it's not a problem with Cinnabar Island, it's an issue with that with the way that these tiles are programmed. And theoretically, there we go. Right? Alright, Pidgeotto in the water. So this was first thought to have been done via this guy right here. So the way that this was discovered was this guy here it is. So this guy, if you trade with him, right? So I'm going to trade my right shoe. Right? And notice that this information updated. And that is because that holds the data for trainer. Now the character trainer has its own its own special like hex number. What happened was someone traded, right? They said, "Okay, I did a trade." Let's go ahead and look for some Pokemon. So they probably either surfed down here or went through here. They got on here. They surfed up, probably. And they encountered a missing now. So that's how it that's how this glitch was actually first discovered. One last thing I am gonna show here is this this glitch is actually useful for for something else too. I mean, this is also useful. You can get basically, what, 255 Master Balls if you get rid of the first two and then do it again. Um, you can also get, like, Nuggets, Rare Candies. But let me show you where where else this is useful. Let's say you want to battle competitively with your friends, right? Let's say you're in the Safari Zone, right? Now, Safari Zone, these Pokemon are notoriously hard to catch. Like, it is a freaking nightmare catching them all. So what we're going to do is, we're going to go to Safari Zone, okay, so let's go to Area 3. So basically what you're going to want to do, you're going to want to let your timer run out, but that will require me to sit here for 429 more steps, which I'm absolutely not going to do. So instead, we're going to change that to 0, 0, and 1 step. Here it is. So if I look back, now I only have 1. There it is. So this is the data for... The safari zone, like the area I'm in. And we'll do the same thing. I'm not changing any of the other data, I'm just making it so I can get an encounter faster. 
It'll save time that way. Right? So, there you go. Right? Vinonet appears in the Safari Zone. There it is. Right? So now you can get an Execute instead. Instead of having to worry about the Safari Balls. That's how Missing No works behind the scenes and everything. Uh, if you have any questions, like, let me know. I'll be glad to show off anything else. 